So right now, we have so many exciting things on the horizon as far as projects to come, events to come, a whole bunch of things that I will talk about a little bit later, possibly in this video, if not this video, the next video. But what we are focusing on today is I'm going to be spraying Raptor protective coating or bed liner, spraying that on a car. I'll walk you through the process of exactly how this stuff works, how to spray it out to make sure that it is going to look beautiful. We are going to do it on the engine bay of this EG hatch project that I have been working on, but either way you could do this process on any car whether it's in your truck bed engine bay interior exterior whatever you want to do i'm going to show you how to make it happen and now you're watching the next level of pure talent and emotion that is a preschool graduation performance channel of youtube welcome to body vision Hey, so what is up and welcome and thank you so much for joining me yet again on another video. So before I can get into the Raptor protective coating, I want to get the engine bay stripped. I just need to get absolutely everything that I can take out, out of there and out of the way. We got everything out of the engine bay. We got all of the suspension components, all of the brake lines, fuel lines. Those were all cut back. The owner is going to be rerunning those. So we got that out of the way and then dropped the entire subframe. I found when painting an engine bay, it is definitely best to get everything out of the way that you possibly can. You just, you just get a better result that way. So now that the engine bay is looking good, I want to shift my focus to prime the entire car. So at this point, now that we got the primer down and it is looking like you would think primer would, I'm gonna go ahead just with my guide coat. This is gonna be the key to see what kind of imperfections there still are. And really the first round of guide coat is really a big round for me because like I said, I know that there still are imperfections. This is just gonna show me where those imperfections are. So it's a good idea to always use guide coat, especially when you do body work. I'm gonna get it all in these cracks and everything where I shave these holes down. So I'm just gonna kinda do, I'll just do one door at a time or one area at a time just to show you what I got going on. Also, I just got word, man. We have a special guest coming in. He's actually pulling up right now. Let me go grab him. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on? I was just checking out your other project back there. Really cool. Yeah, that's going to be a fun project, huh? Just checking in on the uh, build over here, man. And uh, it looks like you're doing pretty good, man. You got the whole thing primered up. Yeah. I like what you got going on. So you're going to do like a, a blocking out now? Yep, exactly. That's okay. what we're just getting into. I just primed the car last night, so that's what they had just saw, and I kind of talked a little bit of detail on how this is the first guide coat that I'm going to do. Right. I sometimes guide coat it two or three times. Like, I know there's still a couple dents here and yeah. there, but I just want this to show me where they are. It's so it's hard like to find them sometimes, you know, right. and I've been in situations where I've done all the body work in the world, and sometimes I paint it, and I still find one, and I have to go back and fix it later, so, my, you my know. My TL is the same. <laughs> Every time I drive it, I know where that one little ripple is, so. Yeah. I'll just take a look around the car and see what yeah. else you got going on. So these were done since you saw the car last, the shock tower extensions. Really nice, nice and smooth. Thank you. So man. a little bit of primer here and they're good to go. Yeah. All right. And then also the side moldings got shaved, right? These holes that were wow. over here. The moldings are really nice. And I like that you didn't tamper with the actual body line. Yeah. You know, that's really, really good. I know some people were concerned about the treating the backside. That's no problem because you already said you put the cavity wax under yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cavity wax is just a spray. You spray it behind the welds and then you're good to go. And a lot of that stuff too, like those, these small finite details, I just do them off camera. Yeah. Like, cause yeah. I'm not gonna, like some people had asked me if I treated the underside of this. Of, of course I did. Yeah. Like, of course I'm gonna do that mm -hmm. stuff, but I'm not necessarily gonna show Yeah, I don't think your viewers are too interested in that really. They just want right. to be entertained and, right. and see what's going on. 
Really nice work so far, man. Thank you, man. I can't wait to, to come down and get the final thing painted. This will be, it's a fun project for sure. Like I said, I come through on the easiest part. So thanks, Bodie, for doing all the hard work. I'm going to get down to South Florida and uh, paint some cars, and I'll, I'll see you in a little bit when we get this swing in the booth. Cool, man. Nice seeing you, man. Always. <laughs> I'll go play with your dog for a little bit. Okay. <laughs> was blocked 100%. It is now time to prime the entire car again, and hopefully this can be the last time that we're needing to prime it. So now let's get into the main portion of this video, actually spraying out that bed liner. So this kit came with this spray gun, or this is the spray gun that is required in order to spray this stuff out. So I had to put this tube on, pretty self-explanatory. This tube goes there, because this is about the size of the actual paint itself. That little tip had to go on the front. I also had to put this regulator on here because you are supposed to spray this between 40 and 60 PSI. And I also put a little inline air filter on it, which was already on it because this was on one of my old paint guns. But either way, so what we have here is for every tintable base, we have a tint. Now this came together as a set, so you wouldn't want to just tint it with any random product. So we have the red tint, the car is going to be red, the engine bay is going to be red, but the engine bay is going to be this Raptor liner. With this Raptor protective coating, this is actually a white because it's tintable. I think the standard stuff just comes black if I'm not mistaken, but either way, what we're going with is the red. So we have one tint per container, and what I wanted to do and what I like to do, I just dumped everything out into a mixing cup, and I added the tint, I added the full jar, and then I put it back into the jar itself. The directions just say just add it and shake it up, but I wanted to make sure that I was real thorough with how everything was, and that's not even my red one. My red one is right here. Now you can go ahead and pre-mix all your tints before if you want, so long as you don't add any hardener to it. So you can see that's all pretty good. Now when it comes to the hardener, you use eight ounces of hardener for every 24 ounce bottle. So what we're gonna do right here, we have the hardener, activator, or catalyst, whatever you wanna call it. So it's just got one line on it. So we're gonna go eight ounces. And what we're gonna do is add it carefully into our tinted base. Now I don't know that it would matter if you do your hardener, then your tint, or however you want to do it. In the end, it's going to be the same. So this just says to shut the lid and mix it up, but I may be going to get a paint stick in here, work it around a little bit. Once I'm done shaking this up and I'm happy with that, this just feeds on right there, screws in. This bottle is actually what's going to hold the paint. It's going to spray right there. And the texture comes from the spray pattern itself more so than the material. It kind of comes out in like a splotchy pattern. You'll, you'll see how it sprays out in a second.
went down pretty good. So when I'm doing my first coat and my second coat, my mindset changes just a little bit. On the first one, I wanted to get red absolutely everywhere, focusing on getting it in the crevices, and I wasn't so much focusing on the consistency of the surface, just because it's gonna be a little thicker and a little thinner in some areas, but again, I wanted to get red in all of these spots. Now when I do my second coat, I'm gonna focus on the actual consistency of the surface, not as much as coverage of the surface, because I have a good, nice red foundation. Now is where I want that texture to be consistent. I feel like that's key when doing bed liner, is you want the whole thing to look consistent throughout. And also, I wanted to mention, if you're trying to think about how much product you will need to do your project, I used one entire bottle for the first coat. I'm going to use one more entire bottle for the second coat. I think that between those two thick coats, hopefully by the end we can have really good coverage. So now I wanted to get a little bit more into how this actually looks as it sprays out now that I'm about to do my second coat here. The only thing that I can compare it to is if you remember the old school, I don't know if it was Microsoft Paint or Color or one of those things, if you would ever select the crayon tool and it would just leave spots and speckles everywhere, that's how this comes out. So I'm just going to, I don't remember how I have the gun set honestly, so let's just see how it sprays out. So that's about 55 PSI and I'm just gonna do one little So as you can see, it's leaving stripes there. Let me let me bring down. I'll bring down the pressure a little bit so we can see what it would look like closer to, to 40. So this is closer to 40. It's a little bit, not as much comes out when you're doing 40. I found when I'm spraying it, I like to be a little bit higher up in that range, closer to 60. 60 works out really nicely for me. So I just focus on kind of going making it consistent and you can go over it quite a few times to have it become that nice textured pattern that looks really good. That's what we're going for as we're spraying it. That's how I like to do it. That's what I've found to work best for me. But I'd always recommend, man, whenever you're getting a new tool, whether it's paint gun or anything like this, always mess with the settings and figure out where you like it the most. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that second and final coat on and then we'll take a look at this. And this should be, this thing should be getting wrapped up, man. This is a, what a cool process, right? So that was two coats, everything looks really good. Now I went pretty heavy with the first coat. They recommend that you wait at least one hour, but I actually just did one coat yesterday, one coat today, and right now it is actually 95 degrees in the shop. So this should dry relatively quickly, but I am going to give it some time. And that brings me to another point that I forgot to mention. All of the holes, this is extremely important, especially for the fender and whatnot. I went ahead and I pre-threaded in all of these 10 millimeter bolts because I didn't want this bed liner to get into the holes that are going to be being used. So everything for the headlight, the front bumper support, the fenders, everything that is going to be used 
See this nasty stuff? You wouldn't want that getting into the hole. So I just threaded a bolt in there. Now it's perfectly fine and it was protected as I was painting and I didn't put it down all the way. I just screwed it in a couple of turns just so that way the threads themselves are protected and everything looks really good. So if you had any questions, leave that in the comment section down below. And also, I'm curious to see what you thought of the entire process. Would you do this on your car? Let me know. So thank you so much for watching. Like this video, comment, subscribe, do all this stuff. You know what it is, YouTube. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.